Not everyone receives a million dollars for the enlightenment they have shown. This kind of award is given to exceptional people who have advanced the understanding the historical past significantly and this will be the subject of our video today. But first, there has been a mouth-watering array of discoveries emerging out of the Egyptian region now for as long as civilization can remember. Only recently have we begun to understand these very ancient things. And of course, our understanding is still flawed as we attempt to piece together a time that history tried to hide from us. From ancient Nubia all the way to the Mediterranean, the ancient empire that once engulfed this entire region is the biggest fascination in the history of humanity. On par with our fascination with space and indeed astronomy and at the ancient sites, we can see connections to the stars that makes us think there must be more. The discovery of the ancient things all throughout the rise of civilization as we know it has never slowed down. In fact, only 10% of the lost civilizations have been recovered or rediscovered from the sands of time and the discovery of these things is now accelerating at an unprecedented rate. For one reason, Sarah Parkak. Wait to hear this. Dr. Sarah is a renowned American archaeologist conducting her studies from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. She is responsible for some of the lesser known discoveries in the region and is responsible for surveys and excavation projects in Egypt's Fayyum, Sinai and East Delta regions. The new field research that Sarah has brought to the forefront of ancient discoveries is called Aereo Archaeology. It was earlier referred to as space archaeology before the development of advanced satellites to read the terrain and discovering these things that were lost. She is a detective of the past trying to figure out exactly what happened here in antiquity and why it is we don't know what that was. With each discovery comes a sense of overwhelming loss. Something happened to these people, but what? The modern age of archaeology didn't start in Egypt. It began in Peru, where for the first time a little over a hundred years ago, the most advanced technologies of the day were used to uncover and document Machu Picchu that had been long forgotten. This was the first time state-of-the-art equipment was used to begin our acceleration in understanding. Recently, the ancient architect uploaded a video of footage that was captured in 2015 by Brian Forster a strange sculpted monument that almost looks like the pre-planned layout of Machu Picchu. Could the ancients really have designed their city in the mountain before construction began? The sculpture allows water to flow through it. Perhaps Machu Picchu had a similar function that has long been forgotten and this ancient sculpture may have been the centerpiece of an ancient temple complex to celebrate the achievement of Machu Picchu. Whatever the sculpture is, it certainly is stunning and in such fine detail that it is almost unbelievable and we will of course link both Brian Forster's footage and the Ancient Architect's video on the subject below so check that out after you finished with this. It is very apparent we don't know who we are and we don't know who the ancients were either. Almost as if we have occupied the earth at separate times as other earthlings, like we are just lodgers here for a brief spell of time and we are using this time to try to understand the past because it attracts us with intrigue and our intuition tells us there must be a reason for that. Anyway, Dr. Sarah is the greatest living discoverer of these things in Egypt. Using the satellite technology and crossing that with remote sensing techniques that involves the infrared pattern. She is solely responsible for no fewer than the discovery of 17 pyramid complexes, a thousand tombs, and an astonishing 3,000 settlement sites just outside of Sal El Hagar in the Western Nile Delta, much to the dismay of Zahi Hawass, who was quoted as saying the following on her discoveries. This is completely wrong information. Any archaeologist will deny this completely. This year, Dr. Sarah released her book titled How the Future Shapes Our Past. Based on her methods of archaeology from space, she has blown the door wide open for future discoveries 
and excavations of her own discoveries will probably still be apparent in a hundred years from now. As we pointed out with the modern technology used at Machu Picchu a hundred years ago, our advancements in the future will uncover the secrets of the past. Of course, Chuck over at CFAP's 7865 channel has been doing this sort of research as well. Using the satellite data from Google, Chuck has been instrumental over the years in pointing out these anomalies where they may exist and Mr. Vandenhoven as well found the lost pyramids at the Lake Morris using these methods. And if you missed that guys, we will link that below as well. Dr. Sarah Parkak is not a sensationalist. She is keeping her feet firmly on the ground. Rather than joining a continuous array of Egyptologists who follow a pre-taught path, the good doctor is taking a fresh approach with open-mindedness and the results have been spectacular, much to the worry of the education system who still spout the long tales of the history of Egypt with nothing to back it up except their own interest in the matter of self-prosperity. In a recent interview with the New York Times' Joshua Sokul, she makes the following remarks. We spent a lot of time looking at articles and books. What are the types of features that you might find in this area? And then we start testing different algorithms or different remote sensing processing techniques. It's kind of like a detective investigating, right? We're looking at what techniques, what satellites, what processing methods work. 999 times out of a thousand, you fail miserably because welcome to science. But you have those one or two things that may be a hint of something and you just keep noodling it until you figure out what works. So I was actually known as the satellite girl, which is problematic on so many levels. But there was a cohort of us in the early 2000s that really started applying the technology on a much larger scale. I think the work that I and many of my colleagues did helped to open a lot of people's eyes. I gave a talk at a big archaeology conference about 10 years ago, and this creaky elderly professor from Harvard, a very eminent scholar, came up to me. I thought, oh no, he's going to say something. He goes, when I get home, I'm going to do a Google. like." He was going to check out Google Earth and look at his sites. I'm like, yes. So yeah, it's been a battle, but I think we're there. She really is an impressive person and still only just 40 this year. Imagine what she's going to find in the next 30 years of research as technology develops. And not only that, she is also changing people's minds that were set long ago. We are including her next statement as a reflection of her refusal to bow to the pressure on all sides. She is determined to make her own mind up and this is what we love about her when she states, Archaeology is this incredibly rich field that helps to show the full trajectory of our humanity, all the good and all the bad, all our creativity, all of our foibles. The fact that our common humanity hasn't evolved in 300,000 years while our technology has. I wanted to show how archaeology really works and what we actually do with the evidence we have and how all these amazing new technologies are helping us to ask new, bigger and better questions about the past. Did we mention that she has also been accredited with the discovery of the ancient city of Tanis? The one in the Indiana Jones movie that was lost to time at the time the movies were made? Pretty neat, right? But what do you guys think about Dr. Sarah? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.